on a separate note, I'm 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 somewhat feeling like it in the twilight zone having this conversation because I've just had a conversation with a guy named Adam Coffee. Adam's episode will be live by the time that our episode goes live. And Adam uh, talks about the the private equity playbook. This idea that really, you know, the most successful entrepreneurs sell the private equity, roll uh, some of their proceeds, uh, build the company up as the CEO, uh, sell it a second time, sell it a third time, and and all the while they're you know they're they're a minority shareholder, but they're they're building wealth because the capital of the private equity group, et cetera. And it's so, uh, to use your word, paradoxical for me, because it's such a, a different, you know, in Adam's case, he, he, he thinks of business as the idea is that we're trying to grow a business as big as possible. Mm-hmm. And of course you have to give up a bunch of equity to do that, but your job is to build the business as a manager of the business. Mm-hmm. And, but what you're saying is that once the founder is no longer in control, like it's a psychological uh, turning point in their mind. Like it's a huge change, right? They jump off this this Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We're at the top of the pyramid. Mm-hmm. Everything's great, and then mm-hmm. they move to a situation where they're like they're they're building their life up from scratch. But Adam would say. Oh, just because you're no longer the majority shareholder, um, that doesn't mean anything. We grow the business, even if you own only 10% of it. You got to scale, scale, grow, 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 grow. And he would have this very different view than you do, which is, you know, once you sell, you're going to go through this incredible roller coaster of emotions. You lose your sense of purpose, you lose your identity. And he doesn't see that because he's a private equity guy, right? He sees, mm-hmm. he doesn't see what you see. Um, I, I should, to be fair to Adam, I, I haven't asked him specifically, but I think, you know, he would not, um, feel the same way. He would say the purpose of business is to grow it as big as you possibly can. And, uh, and whether you own the majority of it, a minority of it, a tiny slice of it, that's somewhat irrelevant. The goal is to build what you're saying is very different. It, um, I just curious to know your reaction to, to that no. sort of. Absolutely. I have a very uh, simple reaction to that. It is my observation that uh, successful exited founders belong broadly to one of two groups, uh, creators and investors. And that really is who we are. I don't think it's very easy for creators to be investors. And this is exactly why I think so many angel investors or VCs are unhappy because they're they're innately creators, but it's also very hard for an investor to become a builder or creator. And both are equally fantastic, right? And great. And I learned this lesson actually surprisingly from my children because mm. I have two teenage boys that are very entrepreneurial and the older one is very successful financially already, even though he's 17. But when you raise children, you really, really know them, right? You've seen them from, from the time they, they were born. And my older one is a true investor. He has zero interest in, in creating a building, but he just sees how to make money and he just goes for it. He's fantastic. And maybe um, your guest belongs to, to that category. But then his brother is the opposite. He cannot not create. He has to create all the time. And I can see how he can be very successful doing exactly that, but he'll never be like his brother. And that's great. And I love them both equally. I respect them both equally. And I see exactly the same two groups um, in, among uh, successful people, exited founders or, or, or not. Yeah, I love that distinction, investors versus creators. I think you're absolutely right. Uh, the, the creator, I, I, my sense is that they lose motivation, they lose interest in their company when they're no longer creating. And that might be at mm-hmm. 10 employees or 20 employees or 50 mm-hmm. employees, but the, fairly early in the trajectory of the business's life cycle, they're like, no thanks, I'm, I'm not scratching that itch anymore. Whereas the investor, uh, yeah, some of the, some of the most, financially sophisticated people I know 
are some of the least creative to be to be just totally blunt about it i mean that's that's an oversimplification i'm sure there's very creative financial people, but in general the investors i know who are great capital allocators aren't necessarily the best creators and so i can see why people who are investors enjoy the mature stages of a business and enjoy kind of placing mm-hmm. capital in different businesses yeah um so having the the self awareness to figure out which you are is there an acid test a way i mean you've done it with your own kids but that's taken obviously years <laughs> is there a question you might ask yourself or encourage our listeners to ask themselves to, de- to decipher whether they are a creator or an investor well i think if people are very honest with themselves and they just have to pick one over the other in terms of their priority whether they care more about what, what drives them if they're driven by the idea of uh, playing this game of money making successfully, and I'm not necessarily saying greed because I think greed can be satisfied, but I see lots of investors just loving the game. 